My name is Peter Deng from Africa Development Community Education and Africa Development Publication Company. Uh, what we are doing today is a conference. And the conference, the important of this conference is bringing uh, different presenters from different uh, institutions. And they will be talking about the issues facing the community in Australia. And we will take also the feedback from the community the aim of the conference. Our next speaker is Dr. Bishop. Um, Dr. Bishop is a lecturer at Victoria University. He holds a Bachelor and Master's of Social Science, specializing in policy and human services from RMIT University, and a PhD from Victoria University. Bishop research primary focus on the dynamic and diverse nature of Australian rare migrant groups experience, experiences during the period of displacement. First of all, I would like to thank those who organized this, this forum. Uh, I think this is one of the kind that not only in Melbourne, but also in Australia, I believe, uh, with objective to bring academics and researchers on Southern Sudanese or African communities at large and talk about the challenges that have been facing uh, them in the migration on resettlement process here in Australia. Uh, I, I am really honoured to be part of, of this conference. I thank Raul and all of those who organised this and actually contribute their valuable time to make this happen. In the next 15 minutes, I will be talking about with this topic, loss of manhood and masculinity in changing gender role, the experience of women. About uh, challenges in the problem facing our communities in the settlement process here. And some of these uh, challenges we may ask ourselves, do we find them here from the host culture or in some situation there are the issues or there are factors that we brought to here and clash with the host, with the host culture tradition. With that question in mind, it's actually take us back to look into how our tradition and culture actually try to fit in this, in this community. And what are the challenges? What are the problems? A lot of us, we have been looking at those or focusing on those who are much vulnerable in the migration process, such as women and children. As we all know, they are the most vulnerable in this, in this process, including even in the resettlement process. To some extent, the challenges also faced by men seems to be a little bit ignored there, or though there are uh, the experience of women as part of Southern Sudanese community, also as part of African communities, uh, and mainly the gender roles that have been in a problem here in Australia, and the expectation that we we find here. First of all, what is the group, the Nuer? Where does it come from? How many of them are here in Australia? Which community is this? The Nuer is one of the migrant group where men experience a shift in gender relations and the practice of gender role as a result of migration and resettlement in Australia. If I take you back, excuse me for that, and introduce myself into that, I am also a Nuer, come from this group, but not from South Sudan. <laughs> Which one of you will say, why? why? I'm from Ethiopia, the other side, because the Nuer come from South Sudan and also some part of Ethiopia. So the research explored the concept of manhood and masculinity of Nuer men as Nuer is settled in Australia. Uh, and also try to understand the changes in gender role and the impact within their household. Especially the conflict that occurred between men, women, or if you like, husband, wife, and children which has also become a big issue here in Australia. A little bit of background of this group. Uh, as I said, Nuer comes from South Sudan uh, and Ethiopia. Culturally, they are a Nairobi group, along with Dinka and Cholo, I think. The, the, same, the same tribes in terms of tradition. They are, they are the, same, the same tradition and a lot of similarities. 
So the new one speak new language, known as Tongna. Economic life, they are part of, they depend, their economic dependence is based on, uh, on cattle. So they follow the cattle grazing wherever they go. Uh, and then they migrate to Australia since 1984, that when some of them came, and then now the number increased after that. The number now estimated about three to 4,000, but there's no actual fact. If I take you back up there, you can see Nui, Nui with N-U-E-R. The reason I put it question mark and a red is because I want to explain something to the entire world and to the entire community. When I speak, I say Nui, Nui. With this sound, and you look at how it is written, N-U-E-R, actually it doesn't reflect my sound, Nuer, Nuer. That one is Nuer, and the, the upper one is Nuer. These two, they have different meaning. Uh, Dr. Johnson uh, and various researchers actually who did research on Nuer, they have been using Nuer. So it's been a popular name that has been used as a name of this particular group. But in actual fact, it's wrong. Nuer, the meaning of those who know Nuer language is different. It's actually something like a curse. Nuer with N-U-E-R. When you actually accidentally or by knowledge kill someone, in our tradition, I think also the same to Dinka and to all Nilotics, you don't actually share food or share one place together without any ritual uh, reconciliation being taken place. And that if it's happened, that you become together with those, with someone whom you kill, neighbors or relatives, they say that that's a curse. Because you have done something wrong, and then you are not allowed to interact with that community unless there is traditional ritual take place. And that is Nuer. But Nuer, now with Nath there, Nuer actually is a Sargam in Nuer language. So they assume that Sargam, it is human being depend on food and then Sargam is one of the food that make this society, society and make Nuer a Nuer. So they, they take the Nuer language, they take the name from that. Therefore, Nuer is known to be Nuer, Nuer, not Nuer. I think many academics and many researchers would actually try to look into that. In my research, my thesis is explicitly explained why and how it came about. So that's why I use that. The language is known as Tongna, not uh, so that one it's, a, it's something that will take a long time to be corrected, but I think it is it's, it's a correct thing to do. Uh, or challenges that are facing us came about. What is the tradition that we brought here that would actually clash with this, with this culture or with this tradition? In family wise, no traditional uh, family concept. Family is a union between a man and women because they are monogamous, not, not a union between a man and a woman. No, it is a union between a man and a woman. That's traditionally the culture allowed them to have many women. That is how they define uh, the family union and I believe with others, uh, brotherly, tribes around there. And then the children. So the model of family also include extended family and kinship. The kinship of Nuer kinship and other tribe kinship that you, you know. Traditionally, Nuer family life or family characteristics is hierarchical. I think that's where the problem will start now to, to occur in Australia. Because the family structure is hierarchical relationship is characterized with domination where a man is powerful 
entity within the family has full, complete decision-making process. And women and children, they have no power as such. I think when this particular group try to integrate into this community, into this society, that actually create a clash. Within the family, men's role traditionally, as we know, looking after cattle, as I said before, uh, cultivation, providing security, and fishing, hunting, and providing for the family. So these role, I think, maybe if we can look into what of the role that may be existing here now, probably would be fishing, because they may go and fish in the ocean here. But looking after cattle, not there. Cultivation, they're not there. Providing security, they're not there, is being provided by the police. Uh, hunting, they're not there, they don't hunt anymore. Providing for the family, which actually was one of the main role of Nur man, or an all nilotics group, the role of a man has been challenged here. Because they're no longer they don't have a power to provide for the families. Why? Employment or what? So this is the question. This is a complex issue. In contrary, women's roles traditionally uh, as all work, caring for children, milking cows, collecting firewood, serving husband, husband and wider community. Some of these also a lot of them have changed. Maybe caring for children is still exists. Women, they're caring for their children here. The household work, yes, they do household work, but a little bit also changed because women are now doing external work. They are employed. They are doing the same work as, as men. Come back home, they will all be faced with the challenges of we should actually prefer food. Is it a woman? They all come from work or a man. So the, the, these things actually clash. Uh, serving husband, that's also become one of the areas that create tension. So the men experience in this situation, the expectation was men would access meaningful job and provide for families, which is actually when people come here to Australia, to America, to Canada, they come with the objective, I take my family to that place where they will get peaceful situation, which actually has been, been found. Uh, I will be able to get a good job and provide for them, which some situation, yes, some situation, not. And better access to education, which actually occurred, and employment. Would continue hierarchical relationship within a family. That's, that's an expectation. This turned out not to be the case because all of these actually uh, been faced with challenges. Getting a job, uh, continue uh, to provide for the family, it's become a problem. So the impact of change on Norman in particular, when the provision to the family and the power of a man being challenged by these issues, it's become a challenge to, muscul to, uh, to masculinity and to, to manhood itself, to this particular group, which is actually, I think, similar to all migrant group, those who are trying to integrate into, the, into this uh, Australian community. The impact is that loss of breadwinner status is not, it's no longer there, loss of decision-making role, example, on use of resources, loss of family and community, educators' role, government as intruder, educator who takes men's power away. These are the, the things that perceived or become perception of men, issues that have been facing uh, men. And these result in stress, anxiety, social isolation, and conflict, especially domestic violence, because the challenge or the result of loss of breadwinner and loss of manhood, some men turn it internally into their families. 
and that caused family conflict, which become a big issue now. Not women also on their side. They also been challenging the manhood itself because that situation that was there in Africa is, is a different here now. Men has got opportunity to challenge this with the, with the actually a, a genuine ground. Search for self-reliance, uh, equality in gender role practice, equal power in decision-making process in family matters, which I should have been been implemented now, looking after men as lazy for those who actually fail to get job and provide for their families. Women in some situations, they look at the men as lazy who do not want to work. That's, that's, that's what, it, it throw the interview, <laughs> you may be loving this, throw the interview and actually focus group discussion. These are some, these are some of the issues that are revealed from, 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 from men. So uh, the, result into, the result of this actually family conflict and trigger government intervention. The government intervention is uh, another, another, another issue which need exploration and need information. I think this is why a conference like this is very important to, to give uh, uh, knowledge to service, for, to service providers who are supporting this particular group and also to, to the government authorities. Masculinity, uh, as we know, has been defined simultaneously as a place in gender relation, the practice through which men and women engage that place in gender and the effect of this practice in bodily experience, personality and culture. So, when you look back into our uh, tradition that just I've just, I just explained, it fit well. This this is the definition of this masculinity. But in terms of practice, in practical uh, term, in in here in the Western Western uh, in the Western practice, is is difficult. If, thanks, Dr. Bishop. That was very informative. If there is one thing you would tell service providers or even the members of the community especially when dealing with the families of the Nuer background, considering your studies, what do you think you should tell them that they should consider when they are approaching as a service provider that particular family with an issue, based on your research? Uh, I think the, the best approach is to engage the community members themselves, from both, there are community leaders, there are, which come from men, women, and also involve young, young, young people. Without their comment and their involvement in the approach that will be taken in regard to their, to their needs, I think that will, that, that's the one that creates much problem. They need to be part of the policy, they need to be part of the implementation process, all the communities, because in some situation, uh, when the policies are actually released and implemented, the, the service providers, the uh, government authorities, they somehow act according to the, literally based on the policy in the law. The tradition itself not being given a place. Thank you, Dr. Bishop, for your <coughs> nice talks and the great knowledge that you brought to us. I, I just captured the, the context of how we meant in African context and as you put it in a newer context and that I think that the same thing in some other, uh, some other tribes from Dinka and another group, uh, the definitions of the, the women in our culture. Uh, are we not meant to change anything? in our perspective as African men, given to how we identify what is happening in this community and in Australia, and that is creating a social problem. Don't we need to change anything in the perception of women in our community? We need to change more. If you see our people, our community now, they frustrated men, frustrated, you will, you will find them, they just gather somewhere, 
and actually play a card, doing something, doing, running away from family responsibility <laughs> and leaving everything. Yes, that's what's been happening. So as men, as men, the loss of manhood actually hasn't gone, hasn't lost. We haven't lost as much as such, but it has been changed into a modern way of, 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 of system. So we need to change, as men, we need to change from that mentality of tradition. Because even back home now, if you go back, we go back home now to, uh, to, to, to South Sudan, you would find Dinka, Nuer, they're not even the same as 20 years ago. No. Back home, this has been changing now. With the experience of refugees come, uh, with the experience of different countries. So the change has been happening. Even here, we need to change as men. Yes, there are challenges. To overcome these challenges, we need to change and actually be cooperative with, with women. I came up in your research around uh, the impact of the loss of um, traditional family dynamics and how that might impact on parenting. Because I've observed um, and I've talked to a lot of people who have drawn the same conclusion that the way that girls and boys are parented are very different and it's producing very different outcomes. We have this belief that a boy child can never, for, I don't know how to explain it in English, but basically they can never be destroyed. That a boy can roam and come back. And I think that works for back home, but here they, they go out and there's drugs and there's alcohol and those all sorts of things and they don't actually come back. So I think that girls, and I've experienced this personally where we're raised with a lot more, I guess, structure and a lot, a lot of limitations. So you're kind of forced to focus on your education or get a job. And that's when I sort of look at most people my age, most of my friends are single. And, people, and parents are complaining, saying, you know, oh, girls are not getting married. But it's like, p people are raising their boys. You have, you know, young men who are in their, uh, say, mid-20s to early 30s, and still acting like teenagers. But the girls that are like equivalent <laughs> to their age, no, I'm, I'm serious. The girls who, who technically may be their partners are at a stage where somebody looks at them and says, well, okay, I'm established. How do I then... You know what I mean? So I'm just wondering if that came up in your research in terms of the impact of the, the changes to traditional family dynamics on parenting and, and what came up, if anything. Uh, the traditional belief, as you, as you put it, back home, girls are actually looked like properties because they are the future of the family because the family look at girl as a source of income. Because when they get married, you the other extended family men whatever without girl they cannot marry. You cannot marry unless you have a sister or whatever something at home there with nilotics. So boys, uh, they, they they actually they are considered yes they are powerful and they they can cultivate their whatever, but the girls are the most vulnerable. I think even here the change of family dynamics here. You can see now, the girls here, they are still being seen as the most important because that traditional marriage hasn't changed from all of our, our, our tradition. It has changed maybe probably from cattle, but we still use the name cow, but it's, it's been replaced with money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. So the girls are being seen that way. A natural fact. With the tradition, with, with this integration process, boys, as you say, they are running out, and actually do not do much as such, involved in different issues. It is girl. When you have girls, you actually you are in a safe, you are in a better, better position. So I think the family dynamic have changed, and children <coughs> now, they are out of the control of the of the parents with this with this situation that we have been seeing. Only the girls are a bit, a little bit have understanding and actually a better, a better association with the parents, with listening to the parents. So I think that one is a problem. The boys, even you can see our boys now in our communities, they don't even go to school as such after finishing secondary school. They don't, at the university, two years ago, I had 
people from, from our communities, actually most of them, they were big people, old people. What are young people? They don't come to university. They don't want to go to school. Only the girls now, you can see the number of girls in the school. So that actually changed, changed it. I think it's something neat. Because young people, they are disengaged. They use, they have associations, some of them involved in drugs, some in alcohol, whatever, become a problem. Yes, I don't say that men, do, uh, uh, girls do not do that, they do. But comparatively, boys, it's a difficult situation. Maybe they, those who are from law, like Chort, they would know <laughs> much more about this. Um, in the Vietnamese tradition, we had that same male-dominated position as well. And for a period of time, a lot of the Vietnamese men didn't want to marry Vietnamese women because they thought the Vietnamese women were too rebellious. We are here, we, 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 we um, understand, you know, the, the Western culture is more advantageous to women than to men. Many of them then went back to Vietnam when Vietnam opened up to Western uh, investments and married women from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And that created another set of domestic ch family challenges as well for quite a, a, a period of time. Uh, so I think it would be better for us to understand the environment here and find ways to integrate than to deny what is here um, in this country. Mm -hmm. I actually knew I could take you to a port that was quoted about 400 and something BC before the Christ that exactly talk about this thing. And you could Google it yourself and say children now love luxury. They have a bad minus. That was 400 years, 400 before Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing new. We can talk about it today as if it was new. But every generation tends to plan a generation after them. So we can say this is an issue caused by a certain thing, but it's just human nature. Of course, there's all this aspect of it that comes to play. I'm not specifically talking about uh, the drug and everything. We understand it's a different culture. But I'm just trying to remind us, we tend to blame the generation after us. Our parents did blame us, but we're putting that on the older generation. So we have to be aware of that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr.